I don't know about you, but I've been using Pixel phones for years now and I'm still stumbling on new features or at the very least constantly rediscovering features that change the way I use my phone on a day-to-day -day basis. If you're like me and can't keep track of them all, don't worry, this video is definitely for you as I'm going to share some incredibly useful but sometimes overlooked features, tips, and tricks that can help you maximize your time with your Pixel phone experience. A lot of these fundamentally change how I use my device and I think they'll be helpful for you guys as well as, hey, we are our Pixel fans here. So I hope this video helps. And of course, if you find this content valuable, consider subscribing to the 9to5 Google YouTube channel, because trust me, we have so many more videos like this coming your way. Probably the best and easiest place to start here is with Circle to Search. It's a really powerful tool that surprisingly I don't see enough people talking about. First off, there has been a few updates over the past few months, including a slight redesign where all the icons are uniform in a pill-shaped container, and some features have been adjusted as well. To give you a quick rundown. You can initiate a search, of course, by tapping or circling on an object where you get a short AI overview, which is new, by the way, of the item you're searching. This is generally a good avenue to quickly get information on a subject when needed. Alongside that, you can tap on the music icon to identify music playing nearby or even music playing through your device speakers, crazy enough. And don't forget that translation icon as well, since it's super useful to instantly translate your entire screen on the fly. Some other interesting tips you should know. When you summon circle to search, you do get the Google search bar at the bottom. If for some reason the search bar is blocking the content you're trying to get information on, you can two finger drag it out of the way. Another tip is that you can also select text inside an actual image or even better scan QR codes, which by the way is super convenient as it saves you a lot of time from having to take a screenshot or take a photo of a photo, let's say. Personally, I love circle to search and it's a good feature that you should be using more often if you aren't already. Something interesting that I think a lot of people don't know about, including myself until I researched this video, is that you can place a lot of convenient individual app shortcuts on your home screen. So you might already know that you can long press an icon on your home screen and see a list of app shortcuts. And depending on the app, you get a lot of different actions. But if you long press on an action, you can drag it to your home screen for one tap access. So with YouTube, for example, you can add one tap access to search, subscriptions, or your shorts feed. With messages, you can add one tap access to start a new conversation or enter an existing thread with a certain contact. Google Keep has a ton too for starting a new note, list, photo note, or audio note, and the list goes on, especially once you realize you can do the same for third-party apps. No doubt you can really customize your Android home screen to make it perfect for your needs. Speaking of something that is perfect for your needs, if you're using a Pixel device, you 100% need to be using private space for a few reasons. For those who don't know, private space is a feature introduced in Android 15 where you can have a completely separate secure area on your phone for specific apps and their data. It's cut off completely from the rest of the device and it can be useful for a few reasons. Most obviously, you can hide sensitive apps or data in there that you don't want others to see, which, hey, we listen and do not judge here, so you do you. But I think even if you don't have something to hide, you should still be using it for a few reasons. For me, over the past few months, I found it incredibly useful as a means to control distractions. In my private space, I've put everything in there that I know that I'm privy to constantly checking that I probably shouldn't be for my own mental health. So for me, it's social media apps like Facebook or Instagram, Instagram. I also have my stocks app in there via Robinhood because I definitely don't have to look at that on a daily basis and I have Reddit as well. Basically anything that I'm tempted to check on an hourly or daily basis I throw it into private space so they're at least out of sight and out of mind. And if I'm going to access them it's a super intentional decision that actually has some kind of barrier to entry which is needed for a healthier lifestyle at least in my book. If you're someone that plans to have your phone for many many years to come then you do need to take a look at another small feature introduced in Android 15 under the charging optimization settings called limit to 80%. There's no crazy tricks here as the name is self-explanatory, but turning this on will only charge your battery up to 80%. The primary purpose of this is to reduce battery stress over the long term as charging it to 100% and keeping it there for extended periods of time can lead to battery degradation. Plus, it will minimize the cycle charges at a higher voltage, therefore extending the battery lifespan as a whole. Obviously, the trade-off is you 
do get 20% less battery per charge, but if you're trying to be conscious of your battery health, this setting needs to be on your radar. For those that like to take a lot of photos, this next one is a small but great trick that you should have in your back pocket. There are some quick access controls for white balance, brightness, and shadows that are a little tucked away in the camera settings. If you open the camera app, hit the settings icon in the bottom left corner, then more settings, scroll down to quick access controls and turn that feature on. When you do, tapping the viewfinder will focus the camera, but will also put easy access sliders on the edges of the viewfinder where you can make quick adjustments on the fly. This one I actually did not know about until recently, but if you're taking photos often, I think you'll find this super useful. If you have a pro model pixel device and a pixel tablet by chance, there is a really cool feature called hold close to cast. This allows you to transfer media between a pixel phone and a pixel tablet by just holding the phone close. As mentioned, you do need a pro phone because this feature uses ultra wideband connectivity and the only pixel phones that have that are the 6 Pro, 7 Pro, 8 Pro, or 9 Pro, although both pixel folds do have ultra wideband as well. In order to work, the tablet does need to be docked and on the same Wi-Fi network and you need to enable the settings in your phone by going to the settings app, then your Google account page, then go to all services and select cast options. From there, turn it on and then just literally hold the phone close to your tablet and wait for the prompt to appear, informing you the process has started. Stuff like this I really want to see way more often from Google as these little features or quirks are good, memorable experiences that remind me why it's so great to be in the Pixel ecosystem. Last but not least, if you happen to be a Gemini user like me, Gemini got a new powerful extension a while back called Utilities where you can basically manage every aspect of the device itself. From what I've seen, it's one of the biggest requests since Gemini was first released from the very beginning and now it's widely available on all devices, not just Pixel. It's pretty powerful because you can have it do a wide variety of things like open apps, control media, or have it do multiple actions at once like adjust media and control volume to a certain percentage, then turn Turn on battery saver as well for an example. You can also have it open specific websites and settings menus. You can have it take a screenshot or search your screenshots in the Pixel Screenshots app for those that are using the Pixel 9 series. And there are a handful of features that work when using Gemini from your lock screen like setting alarms, timers, flashlight, Bluetooth, do not disturb toggles, and a ton more. As I said, it's a really underrated, powerful extension that I wanted to remind you about as it's super useful. And that, my friends, are some of the best Pixel-related tips you need to know about. Sure, some of these can be found on other devices, but if you're a Pixel user primarily, this should be an awesome starting point to maximize your usage. If there's anything major I missed, please leave a comment so myself and the Android community can see for ourselves. There are so many tips and so much information out there, so maybe we can start a thread in the comments with more and we can feature them in a future video. In the meantime, I'm getting out of here, but before I do, huge shout out to our channel members that can be seen on screen right now. Simply put, we greatly appreciate your support as Damien and I do our very best to make the highest quality Android content on the platform, and we love doing it, and we love having you. Until next time, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.